Good morning, Winniconnect. This is the first morning WHTV Winniconnect has had in almost a year. Hashtag Flashback Friday. Hey, Pat. <laughs> kind of sad that March is over. It was such a nice month. Yeah, indeed it was, especially with March Madness. Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, you and Mr. Dr. Professor Kyle had a story on it, right? It's true. Should we check it out? Oh, for show. Oh, what's up, Winniconnect? Didn't see you there. Spring has officially arrived, and with spring comes March Madness. And with March Madness comes more upsets than the teenager during puberty. This is true. Patrick and I took an in-depth look into the tournament and who you have winning. Check it out. Possibly the best tournament in the world, the NCAA D1 Men's Basketball Tournament draws millions of fans. The heartbreak of one team brings joy to another. For the last 76 years, the national championship has been decided in March Madness. Other than some slight changes, the tournament has stayed the same. Today, the bracket is filled out with 64 teams that make up four regions. In each region, teams are ranked 1 through 16, and the 1 plays the 16, 2 plays the 15, and so on. Anything is possible in the tournament, and no team is safe. All the teams have one goal, being crowned national champion. Mr. Shrivel is a statistic teacher here at Winnicott, and he broke down the probability of getting a perfect bracket. We also talked to your fellow classmates about who they had winning the tournament. All right, there are 63 games that you would have to guess correctly from first round all the way to the championship. You have two outcomes for every game, and so you would do two to the 63rd. And this would be completely guessing at all 63 games. And we did the math earlier, and we came up with a number that looks like this. Right there. There's about nine quintillion, quintillion different ways to fill out a bracket. Now if you know something about basketball and you're an educated guesser, you can reduce this pretty significantly. Not many people choose a 16 seed to beat a one seed. And so maybe you might not, you have four games that you're sure you're gonna get right. So as you start improving your guessing, the chances of you guessing, the number of ways to fill it out gets smaller and your chances of guessing correctly go up. All right, I got Kentucky taking home the ship because I got 12 solid big men. Uh, probably the Benjils. I think Benjils has a really good chance, you know, if we get Dennison off the sidelines. Um, basically, like, if Gary just pulls it together, then Benjils definitely got it for March Madness. Michigan. I think uh, Kentucky is all the way, just because, you know, they dominate. Kentucky. Cause they're good. Uh, I got Duke winning it all just because Jaleel Okafor is unstoppable and Cook and Winslow is best backcourt in general. I like their depth and their defensive their defensive play is just phenomenal. All right, my prediction this year uh, is that Kentucky's going to take it. Uh, they were 34-0 going into the tournament. Um, I think they're going to carry that right through the tournament and win it all. I hope you enjoyed our story. If you forgot to make a bracket this year, as always next year. Patrick and Kyle, signing out. Wow, all those buckets made me hungry. Same here. You wanna ditch and go get lost? I would. Money's tight. I can barely even afford to pay child support for my five kids with these rising oil prices. Uh, that's, yeah, I know how you feel. But luckily me and Griffin did a story about it and see what the oil prices are doing. Hey Winnicunit, it's Griffin and Mike here with a more serious story. We're talking about the oil crisis in Syria and how big of a problem it's going to be. It's been affecting a lot of Americans, gas prices have been going up, and a lot of jobs have been lost. So let's take a look at the story. The year was 1793. Ronald Reagan boarded his ship, the Titanic, and sailed over to India. He was in search of oil, and oil is just what he found. With the new discovery of oil, caused new wars. 
The Ethiopian War being one of the most popular occurred in 1770. <laughs> April Fool's Day, one of the most lighthearted holidays in the world. A day devoted to pranks, jokes, and simply trickery all over the world. This holiday got its start in the late 16th century when Pope Gregory XIII ordered the Julian calendar to be replaced with the Gregorian calendar. The new calendar that's still in use today celebrates New Year's on January 1st, opposed to the Julian calendar's April 1st. Some people at that time refused to change and still celebrated New Year's on April 1st, and they became known as April Fools. The Gregorian calendar folks traded these April Fools to pranks, and it's these pranks that are still with us today. We asked you, Winnicunit, what have you done for pranks, and what have been done to you? I brush my teeth a lot, and all the spit that you spit out with like the toothpaste and stuff after you're done, I spit it onto a bucket, and then I put my brother's door half open, and I put the bucket on top of the door, so when he opened it, it uh, spilled on him. My tooth spit. Shane! Hi. Come here! What? <laughs> <laughs> The best prank I ever done is fake lottery tickets. Well, once when I was a young child full of energy and ambition, this jabroni, you might know him, Christian LaRosa, put some hot sauce in my ice cream. And I didn't know. This was no ordinary hot sauce. This was some hot, hot sauce. When I tasted that ice cream, I thought my mouth was on fire. So I tried to cool it off by eating more ice cream. Little did I know. There was only more hot sauce in the ice cream. So for an April Fool's prank, I sticky noted my mom's car so she couldn't see and she had to take like all the sticky notes off. Told my friend my favorite WWE was Triple H. It's really The Undertaker. A more recent one, I threw a pie in some kid's face. That was a couple, that was a couple weeks ago, but you know, we'll count it as an April Fool's joke. Anthony, Anthony. <laughs> Uh, lying to your boyfriend and saying you're pregnant. I think a good prank would be buying a fake pregnancy test at like Spencer's and then telling your mom you're pregnant. I told my mom I was pregnant. <laughs>um, I was pranked by my dad when I was younger. He put like dollar bill on his piece of string. You tape down the sink sprayer so it sprays them when they turn on the sink. I don't have any April Fool's jokes prank. April Fool's! <laughs> <laughs> Classic prank. Give me the phone. What are you recording? <laughs> well, when it kind of, that's all we have for you this year. Hope we gave you some new ideas for next April Fool's Day. This is Mike and Griffin signing out. Do you smell that? I may or may not have farted. That's that's so gross. Why? That smells like rotten eggs. Sorry. Well, speaking of eggs, there was an Easter egg on Hampton Beach this weekend, right? Yeah, last Saturday, almost last Sunday. Wow. Well, Sarah DeMello and Shane Kerwin did a story on it, I think. Uh, should we check it out? We should. Hey, Winnicott, it's Sarah and Shane here at Hampton's 18th annual Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Last Saturday, the 28th, the Hampton Rec Department held their Easter egg dig along Hampton Beach. This was the 18th one and has been an annual event since 1997. And usually it's a sunny, hot beach day. If it's fun, this is no fun today. <laughs> Volunteers showed up and started planting eggs at 8.30, which was two and a half hours before the dig. These 30 or so volunteers were tasked with hiding upwards of 10,000 eggs. We're planting the eggs in the ground so that the uh, kids can come and see what the Easter Bunny planted.
despite the bad weather, like actually pretty bad, it was like there was a lot of, uh, you had to be there. There was a fairly large turnout with 600 or so kids showing up. We're fortunate here in Hampton to have this asset of the beach, and so now we are having a dig that's actually like a treasure. Renee, my assistant, gathers volunteers to bury 10,000 eggs. We have a 10 egg limit for the kids, and um, if they find the golden egg, which we have about 16 of them this year, if they find a golden egg, they bring it up to the table, and um, we give them a special prize. Although there were 10,000 eggs, the kids had their eyes on the 16 golden eggs hidden. Each golden egg is rewarded with a basket of candy and toys that were donated by Playland Arcade. Well, it was sort of peeking out a little. We, uh, I sort of found it in the middle. Then my mom found it for me. Well, we just picked it up together. I was wa walking in the sand and putting my foot in it, and then I saw something golden, and it was the golden egg. Well, when it kind of, even though the weather was pretty miserable, the Easter Bunny still managed to cheer everybody up. Hope to see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> I can dig that story, right, right Pat? Okay. Well, anyways, how was your weekend? Uh, mine was swell. Mine was Seacoast swell. Ooh. Let's, let's kick to Emily and Nikki so they can give us the weekend update. Ladies. Upcoming Saturday, it's the boys lacrosse game at 9 a.m. at Exeter, so go support the boys. Now this upcoming week, we have... Monday, boys varsity tennis versus Londonderry, four o'clock, and girls varsity tennis at Londonderry. Tuesday, 3.45, girls softball versus Amesbury. Wednesday, 3 p.m., girls varsity softball at Portsmouth. 4 p.m., boys varsity tennis versus Merrimack. And 4 p.m., girls varsity tennis at Merrimack. Thursday, girls varsity softball versus Sanborn Regional. And Friday, 4 o'clock, boys tennis at Nashua South. And girls tennis versus Nashua South home. This weekend, it's going to be 40 degrees and raining on Saturday. You might want to bring an umbrella to the boys' lacrosse game. But Sunday, it's going to be 45 and sunny. Happy Easter! March is known as Music in Our Schools Month nationwide. The organization that is responsible for music in our school promotes music classes and groups in schools. Winnicunnet chose to have last week as Music in Our School Week, which featured a trivia contest. The winner was Nate Mangrum, who was awarded with a Lost or Lost gift card. The band played music during break last Friday in honor of music in our schools week. Congrats to Nate, and if you missed the contest, be sure to join in next year. That was some mind-blowing stuff. Oh, for sure. Well, that's a wrap on it, Cunnit. Have a great rest of the day. This is Batman and Robin, signing out.